Hello, and welcome to Brave the Basement. I'm your host, the ghoul that rules. If you enjoy getting a little scared, ghost stories, haunted houses, a believer in the supernatural, or even a skeptic wanting to look at things from a different perspective, then this is the show for you. Today's episode is sponsored by Black One Jack 2. He is a video game streamer. How's it going, Black Jack? Uh, it's doing pretty good. How's it going over there? Super excited. This is the very first episode, and we're ready to just jump straight in. Are you ready? Yes, I am. All right, everybody. So today's episode is Grandma's House. So we've all stayed at Grandma's house, and just about every single one of us has been convinced at one time or another that Grandma's house was haunted. And my story is absolutely no exception to that rule. So without any further ado, we're just going to go ahead and jump straight in. So to set the tone, my grandma's house was built around the time that the Underground Railroad was built. And the Underground Railroad actually goes underneath our city, and it ends at grandma's house. And my grandfather even confirmed this, and the city used to give tours every single year at a local festival that we would have. So, like, the tours of the house? No, they would actually do tours of the Underground Railroad that ran underneath the city. And then uh, several years ago, they had to close it off because they just deemed it unsafe at the time. Now, the crazy thing is, the house was actually built by a doctor. And what it, they would do is they would take the slaves and they'd have them go through the tunnels to escape the city authorities. And then the doctor would, would tend to their medical needs at the time. So, obviously, this house has a little bit of history to it. Uh, my, my grandparents, they had a lot of children. And I heard a lot of stories growing up, and I actually got to experience some of these firsthand. So, when you go into this house, and you walk upstairs, you're going to walk up these stairs, and as soon as you get to the top on the left, you're going to be looking at a bedroom. If you take a hard left, there's a closet right there. So, when you walk down the hallway, you got the first bedroom, you got the middle bedroom, you got a bathroom on your right. And then you got a makeshift bedroom that was actually a kitchen at one point. And of course, upstairs is where a lot of these supernatural occurrences have been reported by my family. Most notably, and we even named the ghost. And if you want to scare everyone about my age and the family, all my cousins, you just mentioned the name Mr. Sellers. So one of the famous stories that comes from that house uh, starts with my aunt. And there used to be an old belief back in the day, especially when she was growing up, that if you were extremely sick and you were sleeping and you were having the falling dream, they say if you hit the bottom, you would actually die. And she claims that one night she was sleeping and she was extremely sick. She was up in bed and she was sleeping in that middle bedroom. We'll get more into that middle bedroom here in a little bit. And just as she was getting ready to hit the floor... She was wakened by this strange man, and we believe that was Mr. Sellers. So, do you think Mr. Sellers is a good spirit or a bad spirit? Well, we definitely believe that he was a good spirit. Um, but you could definitely feel the presence when you walk in this house, if you spent any time in this house, that there's definitely good and, and bad presences there. So, do you think he's still around to this day? Or like, have you checked it out recently? I haven't been in that house now, and... It's been about three or four years. My grandpa has uh, since sold it, so I have not been inside of it for a couple years. But last time I was in that house, you, you could definitely feel just a zone down, I like to call it, where you just know that there's some sort of paranormal, supernatural, spiritual energy inside this home. So like that tension, like when you walk in, you can feel the, present, the presence? Oh, well, most definitely. I mean, it's, it's overwhelming. This place, it's, it's absolutely overwhelming. Uh, my fantasy has always been to find some sort of psychic medium and have him walk through the house and see if he can confirm some some of the names that my family has dug up over the time. Um, so earlier I described the house, but what's really interesting to note is this house is up on a hill, and it goes down a hill, and at the bottom of this hill is an old railroad track. It's, it's been shut down. And right after railroad tracks goes up this big hill again and then back down again. And at the bottom of that hill is the park, the city park. And at the top of the hill, right before you get into the park, are trails. Okay, and they lead back to the cemetery, this old cemetery. And I spent a lot of time there hanging around 
uh, when I was doing some of my amateur ghost hunting. And I happened to notice that all the names on the tombstones were the same family name except for the women. Because, of course, at that time, all the women would took the name of their husband. So the only, the only name change on the tombstone, other than one particular family, was literally the women. And so the family rumor goes that a lot of people that died in that cemetery died in that house as well. So do you think that family at some point owned the house? Well, we're not 100% sure, but that, that definitely is the family rumor. Uh, I couldn't prove it. I, I don't have the paperwork. Uh, just, just a word off my aunts, my uncles, my grandpa, my grandma. So that's what we think. So to get into some of the actual scary stories. So when I was a little kid, grandma would swear because right next to her house is a was an old abandoned home. And we called it the White House, okay? And, uh, the, like I said, this house was abandoned for years and years and years, and it's since been uh, bought and it's been fixed up, and people live there now. But Grandma would swear that she would be doing dishes, and the window, uh, right, right above the sink, was looking right at the house, and she would swear that there would be a man staring at us for years. And I remember this scared us all so bad that when all me and my cousins would have sleepovers, and we'd stay up late, you know, telling scary stories, and someone would always say, what would you do if you looked outside right now and there was a man looking in? Which now it just don't seem as scary because you just think someone's trying to burglarize my house. But when you're five, that's terrifying to think that there's a man looking in your window and he's looking to kill you. So you guys were looking for this man, basically? Well, I never seen the man. This was off my my grandma. It was the only story that grandma would tell that she would swear for years that there would just be this man just looking outside the window. And, of course, my grandpa, he'd go outside and look, and there'd be nobody there. So it was like one of those coincidence, oh, he's there kind of deal when you're staying up at night, pretty much. Well, who knows what it was? It could have just been some guy. We don't know, right? Someone just... Drunk, walking around, staring into the house. But it was, but, but the funny thing is that if you, if you knew my grandmother, because we would ask her, Grandma, is this house haunted? And she'd always say, oh, no, I've never seen anything here other than a strange man that would watch me do the dishes. And then, so, and then you know, you'd hear all these other stories. And as I grew up, I, I realized that maybe Grandma wasn't telling me the truth, right? Did she experience things? And just because we was little, she didn't want to scare us. So do you think she ever like told the description of the man? Like No, it it was always more like just like a shadowy figure. Oh, that kind of deal? Yeah, that kind of deal where you know, you couldn't make out his features, but you just you knew it was a man and he would just stand there with a blank stare on his face and just watch her through the window. But he wasn't there every night and that that was what really scared her. And like I said, it couldn't have been a neighbor cuz the house was abandoned. There was no one in it. We used to go in the house all the time and play around in there. And I got stories for another show about that house. But the particular story that I'm really interested in telling everyone about today was my experience one night when I stayed the night in that house. Just one night. Well, the main story is about one night. I, I got a couple small stories, but this, but this was the big one. This was, this was the moment in my life that... I got extremely interested in the paranormal. This is what kicked it off. This was the start. This was the whole, this is the real deal. This is the real deal. All the way down to the Halloween decorations, going going all out for Halloween night. This is what started the whole thing. Okay, let's get to it. So earlier I described when you walked up the stairs, you had the couple different bedrooms, and I called one the middle bedroom. Okay. So one night I'm sleeping up there or trying to sleep. I actually just got in bed and after being in bed, just a few minutes trying to fall asleep, started hearing these footsteps coming up the stairs. And at first I thought, Hey, it's just grandma coming to check on us and, uh, heard the stairs and the steps would come all the way to the top. And once you reached the top, you had to kind of make a real quick left turn and then a right turn to go down the hallway. So I heard the steps take the left turn. And then I heard the steps take the right turn. Now at this point, 
The bedroom door is wide open, and you could see directly into the hallway, and there was a nightlight on. And all night long, you would hear footsteps going from where that closet was, past this middle bedroom, all the way down to the last bedroom at the end of the hallway, and back and forth all night long. The whole night? just The whole night. It, it never stopped. It went on all night. But the scariest part was you couldn't see anything. There was nobody there. Nothing. And I'm not talking, oh, I think I hear footsteps. You're 10, 15 feet away from this hallway. And literally, there's the steps. And they'd get to the end of the hallway and they'd stop. And you'd hear the feet shuffle. And then they'd walk back. So do you think, were you with other people? Like with your cousins? Were like, did they hear the same sounds that you heard? Well, my cousin was actually in, in the first bedroom in the other room. So they were staying in one bedroom. I was staying in the other bedroom. And, of course, I didn't say anything to anybody, right? Because I thought, well, people's going to think I'm crazy. And I, I remember being around several of my aunts one time, and they grew up in the house. And they said to me, have you ever stayed the night in the middle bedroom? And I said, well, well yeah. I stayed one night. Did you hear Mr. Sellers walking up the stairs? And walk in the hallway all night long. So they believe it's Mr. Sellers. Yeah, we believe it's Mr. Sellers because uh, from the story that my aunt told was she was actually waking up by, by the spirit, by this man. And she physically seen him. And so if he woke her up and saved her from death, then he must be a good spirit. And we believe that he's keeping watch over the house to keep the bad spirits away. That's cool. Yeah, it's it's pretty trippy. And then the other few stories that I have about the house are, you know, I as I got a little bit older, I started getting a little more interested in paranormal. And I started reading about it. And I was in this house with my cousin. And we were just hanging out, playing video games. And uh, you'd start hearing banging on the wall. And I had just read week or two before that in this book that if you have spirits in your house and they like to bang on walls but they don't ever seem to destroy anything uh, they're just trying to get your attention and the best way to get them to stop from banging on your walls is to bang back so was this in the same house or was this in a different house oh no this is the same house same house same house different bedroom we were in a different bedroom so we were in the first bedroom but literally we're sitting there playing video games and hearing the bang, 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 bang. And my cousin says, you know what? I'm tired of it. I've had enough. And starts, starts banging back. And she says, okay, I know you're here. Stop. And I said, do you have to do this all the time? She said, I'm tired of it. It's constantly. It's every single night. It's every time that the house gets quiet. When you don't hear people moving around the house, you'll hear bang, bang, bang. And you'll be trying to sleep. Bang, bang, bang. And the only way to stop it is bang, bang, bang it back. Well, I don't know if she knew exactly uh, what experts said, especially what I read in the book, that that was the best way to stop. I think she was just agitated. And and I couldn't believe it that, you know, because she wasn't into the paranormal and the supernatural and all those things. So I, I was kind of surprised that she knew how to stop them. But I think it was more out of aggravation than it was about knowledge. She was just pretty much trying to live her life. Yeah, just trying to trying to go go about her business and hear these spirits are just trying to constantly just get attention and that, and that that's what these spirits are trying to do. And I and I think that a lot of them spirits are some of the good spirits in the house. More attention seekers. Exactly, uh those that watch over things, uh try to keep the evil spirits at bay and the ones just trying to get attention, hey, I'm here, I'm here, bang bang bang. So, did you play any like a Ouija games. I know there's like been a Ouija board. I think that's what they're called. But have you ever played any of those, you know, scary games uh, at this house? Not at that house. Not at that house. Now, now I've, I, we, we've played those games at my dad's house. 
but we never played them at grandma's house because I just knew. Because like I said, you, you remember how I mentioned earlier that you'd walk in his house and you'd just feel the zone down. Not, definitely not a place you want to bring a Ouija board to, right? Because the, the channel is just so wide and you don't know what's going to come through. And being that you have actual spirits that are active at that time in the house, it, it's, it's like adding fuel to a fire. Yeah, so we don't want to add more, I guess, what you're trying to say. No, I, obviously not. I mean, we'll open a big channel to a problem that you already have and just invite more in, right? So that was that was always the idea that we just kept the Ouija board out of the house because, yeah, too much going on. So no bueno. Now that brings us to the bad spirits. Oh, God. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that, you know, we'd ask Grandma. Grandma, do you think this house is haunted? Oh, no, 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 no. But see, now, and she would have never, she would never admit to it. But supposedly when they first bought the home and they started moving in some of the furniture and she had been working on the house and cleaning on the house and just got the couch there. And uh, she decided to take a break and just lay down for a few minutes. And she said she was just laying there with her eyes closed and just heard something coming down the stairs and thought she was the only one in the home. And that's when she looked up and seen a headless man carrying his own head with blood coming from the neck. So have you had any other scary stories in this house? I just told a couple of my personal experiences, things that I actually went through. But, uh, Actually, next week, I got a special guest. Uh, it's going to actually be my uncle who grew up in this house. And he's got a lot of stories. And um, I'm holding some of these stories back, obviously, because I, I want to keep it open for him. Um, but let's just say my uncle is probably 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, Big, strong guy. And uh, one particular night, he actually spent the night in my driveway sleeping in his car because of what happened to him in that house when he was in that house. And he would not go back in the house that night. It's weird to think that six foot four guy would be scared to go back into that house. Well, wait, 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 wait till you hear the story, okay? I mean, it is absolutely, it will make the hair on your neck stand up. It is freaky. I'll never forget it. Uh, we actually went back to the house the next day because he was babysitting me. That's how young I was. Um, so he was gonna he was gonna babysit me the very next day, and while he was babysitting, we actually went over to the house and uh, we seen a few things that just wasn't right inside the home. But we'll go into that more on the next episode. But before we go, we'd like to thank our guest Black One Jack Two for stopping by and on Brave the Basement. Uh, Go ahead if you want to tell the listeners out there where they can find your video game stream, what kind of streams that you do. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for letting me come on this podcast. And if you guys want to go to YouTube and Twitch, Black One Jack 2, uh, I stream, you know, Call of Duty, Fortnite, whatever games. Just come and check me out. We're going to have fun. Thank you. All right. So definitely make sure to give them a check out. And uh, we would love to hear from you listeners. So if you got a scary story, some experiences that you would like to let us know. Maybe we'll read your email on the next show. You can reach us at bravethebasement at gmail.com. And that brings us to the end. We hope that we brought you just a little fright. And remember when you were up late at night and you hear something in the other room that just doesn't seem right. It's okay if you need to turn on the light to protect yourself from things that go bump in the night. Hope you join us again. Until next time, you're listening to Brave the Basement. <laughs>